All right, thanks, Nathan, and welcome everyone to this update to the robotics community about what's been happening with the development of a Robotics Australia network. Um, so my name is Sue Kay and I'm the chair of Robotics Australia group and I'll explain what that's all about in a little while and many of you will know me from you know participating in various robotics roadmap workshops uh, and I guess we're just going to explain how all of that ties in together and really seek some feedback on what you'd like to see happening in the future. First, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which we are all variously meeting and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. So today we're going to go through uh, quite a few things and, and then uh, halfway there we'll be uh, looking for some um, participation from you. So we've set up a mirror board, hopefully you all have the link, we'll circulate that through the chat magically. I'm not doing it, someone will do that. And uh, But before we do that, I'm just going to quickly go through why we're all on this call. Um, give you an introduction to the Robotics Australia group, uh, look at the development of the network that we have proposed and what progress we've been making to date. So the reason that we're here is that many of you will have participated in first, we had a bit of a robotics community meeting back in November last year. No, how many years ago? <laughs> when are we? What year is it? Okay, you know, it was only November last year. It feels like much longer ago than that. Uh, and then we had a follow up meeting of the community in February. Um, well, you know, it was uh, mainly the people that were able to get up to Brisbane, unfortunately, but we had quite a lot of people who gave us some feedback on what it was that we could do to create a network uh, within the robotics community in Australia. And what we decided at that last meeting was that we were going to adopt what they, we call a network model. Um, and what that means is that we formed a governance structure for the network, which was called Robotics Australia Group. And it looks after all of the tedious, you know, making sure that we actually are a, you know incorporated not-for-profit entity and that we fulfill the requirements of of ASIC and you know have to put in tax returns and things like that and that the principal objective of the Robotics Australia group is forming the Robotics Australia network which will have its own advisory board and will be representative of the robotics community. So the main um, challenges obviously that we're hoping to address based on you know everyone's feedback and, and through the roadmap processes you know about the visibility and brand issues associated with robotics you know to support the capability and growth of a robotics industry in Australia and to really you know support the development of some great funding models to help support startups and the growth of SMEs in the robotics sector and as I mentioned, the way that we decided to do that was through this network model, which has led to the creation of first the Robotics Australia Group, uh, but then importantly, second, the Robotics Australia Network. So the purpose of Robotics Australia Group uh, is that we are a not-for-profit institution to support the robotics industry in Australia and we've got a pretty broad remit so that includes through actions any actions required to unite, unite promote acceptance growth connectedness sustainability of robotics in Australia to raise funds and engage in any activities you know to help support the operation of that and uh, really to carry on any other business that will help to support that objective but you know at its core it's about supporting the robotics industry in Australia and this is our um, foundation board so these uh, my colleagues here on the board have all volunteered and have put an enormous amount of their time uh, completely for free to help set up Robotics Australia group with the purpose of then setting up the Robotics Australia Network. So I chair the Robotics Australia Group board and I will quickly introduce the uh, my fellow board members and then I will call on each of them to do a, a quick introduction and an explanation of why they think 
uh, having the Robotics Australia group and forming the network is so important. So on the board with me are Shana Glover, who runs uh, the consulting business in Velo, Nathan Kirchner, who has a number of different hats, uh, but including being the uh, CTO of a robotics startup called Prescient in the construction robotics space. Um, Joe Cronin, who is the founder of Australian Droid and Robot, and Paul Lucy, the founder of Project 412. And we haven't got complete representation across Australia yet, but we are only a five person board, but we have covered Brisbane, Sydney and Perth. And uh, we'll look to the future to have some representation from Victoria and South Australia. So first I'd like to call on Shana to do a quick introduction and Nathan to very quickly unmute the appropriate people. I'll go first because I think Shana's still finding a way here. Um, and I'm also stalling a bit while I work out how to unmute people, this being my first time. Um, so just very quickly, I think Australia does quite a lot of good stuff in robotics and we suffer from the terrible fate of not telling each other, let alone telling the rest of the world. And I think if we bring some of it together, we can fill in some gaps we'll realize we're doing a lot more than we currently think we are and we'll go a lot further. Thanks, Nathan. Chan should be there. Paul. Hi. Yep, can you hear me okay, Nathan? Beautiful. Yep. Hi, everyone. Yes, um, Shana Glover, um, also on the um, board of Robotics Australia Group, uh, CEO of Invelo. Uh, with a 20-year track record in, in mining, I certainly saw an opportunity for um, particularly field robotics um, as a competitive advantage for Australia. So I was uh, very keen to join the board and see what we could do for both advocacy, um, you know, and increasing our ability to get funding uh, into our SMEs who are doing some great robotics work in Australia. Thanks, Nathan. Cool. Right now, Paul. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, yes, Paul Lucy. Uh, so I come from the, the resource sector uh, where I was involved in, in automation and robotics. I went to the US and was involved in the robotics scene there. Um, and at that time, I probably met more Australian roboticists in, in Pittsburgh than I did in Australia. Uh, so coming back to Australia, uh, I felt that we probably needed to lift our game um, to where the Europeans and the North, North Americans were at. Um, and join this uh, illustrious board here uh, to um, uh, make a difference at a national level. Thank you. That's cool. And Joe. Hello. <clears throat> Joe Cronin, one of the founders of Australian Droid and Robot. We're a small robotics company uh, based in Brisbane. Uh, my background is in the defence and mining industry, underground automation. Um, I'm very keen uh, to be part of RAG as um, I know there's a thriving uh, SME robotics community and tech startup community in Australia and uh, we really need a voice. We need to uh, make those um, who can use our services and support our services aware that we're here. Thanks very much, Joe. And look, I'll con just continue giving you a bit, everyone a bit more background and then we can open it up for questions before we start on the Miro board activity. Um, and just to try and set the scene a little bit, uh, one, something that we encountered that uh, perhaps we didn't expect when we, we first thought about setting up um, the Robotics Australia group with the intention to set up Robotics Australia network that is that at least from the federal and state government uh, levels there is a little bit of confusion over who's who in the zoo so we thought it was quite clear that there was no one representing the robotics industry in Australia but from an outside perspective that's not quite as clear and so we put this diagram together to really outline where we think uh, you know, is our place. Um, you can see that's quite broad. We believe that we are representative of uh, not only the creators of robotics technology, but also the consumers of robotics technology. And that can be in any sector of the, feed into any sector of the Australian economy. So we see our remit as very broad. And what we hope to do is 
you know, work in with some of the evolving clusters that are occurring, at least in West Australia and Queensland, and have all of that as part of the Robotics Australia network. Um, obviously, AI is an important component of the robotics ecosystem and, you know, my current role is in the AI space, so there's a bit of overlap there, but I think that's actually in a good way in as much as AI represents uh, robotics as a, as, a, as a part of AI and, and hopefully, um, you know, we can work in with the rest of the AI community to, to see some action happening in the uh, state and federal government level that will support initiatives that the Robotics Australia Network are keen to pursue. Um, and, you know, the Advanced Robotics Manufacturing Hub uh, is located in Queensland, but has a national remit. And their aim is to see how robotics technology can be um, gainfully employed by a range of sectors, mainly focused around manufacturing, construction, resources and defence. And then we have a, an initiative that's out of Western Australia, but again is a national in initiative called AROSE, which is around um, remote operations uh, in space and on earth. And we're working closely with them. They're about to um, announce a chair and CEO of that organisation. Uh, and we're very keen to working closely. And again, we don't see that we are overlapping too much in the same space, but we thought it would be handy to put this diagram together to show how all of those different players uh, interact with one another. Because for people who aren't part of the community, that's a question that often comes up. <clears throat> So this is another way of putting this together. And um, I didn't warn um, Andrew Scott, think, I think I ripped this picture off you, Andrew. I hope you don't mind, <laughs> but I thought it was quite good, uh, you know, to try and illustrate, you know, what, what we're aiming to do with, uh, you know, the Robotics Australia network. So the network itself will have a national focus, but we hope that it will be working in with these, you know, state-based state representatives or, uh, technology clusters uh, as well as regional hubs so that we can do the best that we can for uh, anyone who's involved in the robotics ecosystem no matter where they're located in Australia. Now I I'm really sorry for putting such a long list up there and please please don't try and read it because the key ingredient in this is the top line and that is when we were looking at the key activities needed uh, that the Robotics Australia group was set up to achieve the number one thing is establishing and operating the Robotics Australia network and so you know the rest of the board and I we've got to the point where we've got the Robotics Australia group incorporated we're a going concern and now you know we're, we're really seeking your feedback back on, on putting this network together and, and looking at what it can achieve. Some of the ideas that we had around, you know, what the network could be doing um, are the things that we will be exploring on the Miro board, but I just put a few up there as discussion points, you know, advocating for the robotics community, raising the profile of robotics, doing connections, um, making sure that we're recognised on the global stage, not just within Australia, establishing relationships, um, you know, with VCs and also with government, uh, you know, professional development, mentoring, you know, helping companies grow, uh, yeah, connecting industry and researchers with government, leading engagement with regulatory agencies to help improve the regulatory environment uh, that we're operating in, and also, I think we have an important role potentially to play in the development of future skills and, and helping to highlight the gaps and where Australia needs to focus attention for us to have a successful robotics industry in this country. Um, another thing that, you know, I guess we have been putting our heads together on is, is what would it mean to be part of the Robotics Australia Network? What, what are the benefits? What would you get out of being a member of the Robotics Australia Network? And so, you know, we've just been spitballing some ideas about what they might be and would love to get some feedback. So, you know, we think that obviously being able to participate in events, particularly where we have the state-based clusters that are uh, putting on activities would be important actually just knowing who's who in the zoo, making sure that we have a, a good idea of the capability of the industry is important. Um, you know, coordinating consortiums and trying to make sure that there's an increase in funding, um, looking at what sort of funding opportunities are available, um, maintaining a jobs board to help connect 
people who have robotic skills with those people who want people with robotic skills and you know looking at any other sort of services that we might offer to help lower the opex for smes because as we operate as a collective there should be some value and some some cost benefits to to operating in that that form but you know this is just a uh, and a, a short list of some of the many ideas that have been put forward about what being involved in a network might involve. And one of the activities that, you know, the Robotics Australia network uh, will, and Robotics Australia group will be the home for moving forward is, uh, you know, the Robotics Roadmap for Australia, which is, uh, you know, an important tool in getting an understanding and getting some great case studies of the capability that exists in Australia. And as you would probably be aware, the first robotics roadmap was launched in 2018 by the Australian Centre for Robotic Vision. And we are now undergoing a process of creating a second version of that roadmap. And that's really just to make sure that robotics uh, awareness stays at a high level. Uh, unfortunately, I've updated this since the first roadmap and the results are, are a little bit sadder than they were in <laughs> the first version of the roadmap. If you have a look at our robot population density in Australia, it's actually decreased. Um, the, there is a new global leader in terms of robot population density, Singapore. Uh, while China has had the stated ambition to become the world's number one country in terms of robot population density, they haven't got there yet, but that doesn't mean that they are not going to continue their efforts to do that. And as you can see, we're starting to slip behind world average. And sadly, Australia and Hungary are the only two countries in the world where our robot population density has decreased everybody else in the world is doing more. Now, you know, you can argue about how useful robot population density is. It is a, a measure only of industrial robots per 10,000 employees, but I still think it is an important measure. If we were deploying more automation and as there now is more of a focus um, from the Australian government in supporting the manufacturing industry in Australia, you would hope to see that those numbers wouldn't be slipping. Um, so I think that, you know, why I illustrate this point is not to depress anyone. It's actually just to show that I think there is a real need for robotics to have a voice in Australia. And if we can do that, and if we can help to support the creation of policies that will support people to use robots in Australia um, and help to provide those economic benefits that we know will accrue, then we really need to do that. And whose role is that? Um, I guess you know, our contention and the reason that I and my fellow board members have invested a lot of time into trying to, to put this structure together is because we think that that is the role that we need to be playing. And this is just a, you know, a quick cross check back to what were the recommendations from the original roadmap. And, you know, this is only a short list of those, but I think we can all agree that we're only partway towards uh, addressing some of these, if indeed many of them are being addressed. Um, so, you know, accelerating uh, adoption and helping to manage that transition of AI and robotics, um, you know, making sure that people have opportunities to reskill so that they can benefit from the creation of a, or the support of a robotics industry in Australia. Um, there are a number of different areas that government could uh, look at that would support more robotics and uh, activity. Uh, clearly stronger investment and clustering of activity are useful, as well as continuing efforts to you know, develop, attract and retain talent and encourage that entrepreneurial spirit that will see more robotics companies being created here in Australia. Now, Nathan has very kindly gone through the uh, first results from the roadmap survey. So for those of you who've been involved in any of the roadmap workshops, you'll know that because we've had to move to virtual format, we tried to cover all bases by also offering people the opportunity to give us feedback through a survey. And the survey wasn't about the network, it was specifically around some of the questions that we're trying to answer by producing a second version of the robotics roadmap. And some of the observations from the results of that survey. So we don't have a, we don't have a um, very technical analysis of the results so far. This is just to give you a preview of what we found from doing that survey. Um, and that really is that uh, the majority of our um, members or potential members of the Robotics Australia Network are robotic and robotic technology creators. 
um, when we have a look at what was the, what was the goal that most people were interested in achieving um, was that it was about building sovereign capability and becoming the recognized world leader for robotics and robotics related technologies um, being a key to growing our industry here in Australia. Some of the barriers that people identified in the survey for us achieving that goal was uh, the development and proliferation of costs, fear of the wider industry to adopt our technologies uh, being a major barrier. Um, and um, sorry, a couple of typos there, but um, you know, a major barrier to building our sovereign capability and growing our industry is uh, you know, that fear by the wider industry of adoption. So I think that's something that we clearly have to address. Uh, how can we support companies to be able to adopt te these technologies that we're hoping to develop? Some of the needs that were identified by uh, the robotics community were, uh, again, the word sovereign capability keeps coming up and supporting that capability um, to be able to grow our industry. So the lack of support is clearly identified as a need. And what help could be put in place to help address some of these barriers? Um, and one of the important considerations was the need to better align as a community uh, and to see support investment as a key unifier. And finally, you know, where is it that, you know, the people who've been involved in uh, participating in the roadmap survey, at least, where are they from? Uh, and you can see we have quite a balance of industry experts, practitioners, researchers, and enthusiasts, and we need all of those components to be able to succeed as a, as a network in the future. So I'm going to leave it there and open up to questions for the for next uh, maybe five minutes before we move on to the mirror board activity. please uh, feel free to ask questions uh, and then we'll move to the slightly more anonymous mirror board where you're also <laughs> welcome to ask questions and, and give us some suggestions. So Sue, there is a question on the mirror board from, I'm um, sorry, on the chat from Juxi. Uh, so what are the measurable targets and milestones tangible for the next six months, one year and three years? Um, and while you, you, um, think about that, I'll, guess, I'll give my perspective, um, which is obviously one of the things we're trying to do is get the robotics industry recognised as an industry and get it um, within uh, the Australian Bureau of Statistics. So that actually will help us, Trixie, with your question, which is actual targets, because we need to be able to, to measure the industry. Um, so I think certainly how many robotics uh, SME companies we've got, what's the contribution of robotics to GDP. These are all measurable targets that the board would like to um, you know, be able to track and obviously put uh, targets and strategies around. I think also through the work we're doing around advocacy, uh, government support uh, and obviously that translating in terms of dollars is also something that we will be, um, be putting as a, as a target. And obviously, as Sue said, we're um, targeting the formation of Robotics Australia as a network. So definitely um, people voting with their feet and membership and numbers of membership would certainly be um, measurable targets. So, but we'll take uh, also an action, Juxi, to make sure at our next update to the community that we put, um, I think it's a good comment, put our operational plan with the, uh, the targets up uh, that the, the board are, uh, are working on. Sue, I don't know if you want to make any more comment. Yeah, I only to say that obviously there are a couple of things in train um, that uh, you know that that we are targeting. One is the formation of the Robotics Australia network. Uh, the second is uh, actually um, successfully producing version two of the robotics roadmap for Australia. We've also been involved, as Shana mentioned, in some advocacy activities, which probably aren't too visible to the robotics community, but I think are really important in terms of raising our profile. What that has meant is that the um, federal government 
uh, has enlisted our help to um, help define the capability that exists in Australia. Now, they've chosen to do that in their own particular way, and that is by creating a survey to try and get a handle on both the AI and robotics capability that exists in Australia. And so as soon as that survey is available, we'll be distributing it to um, the network as, 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 and distributing as far as wide as we can and encouraging people to complete it because I mean, I think it is a big step forward that the federal government is asking these questions. Uh, the big risk for us is whether they actually do a good job of, <laughs> and they get sufficient responses to get a good handle on the capability. Because I think there are, you know, other ways that they could be measuring the capability. One of the other things that we are considering doing is uh, working in with the Australian Bureau of Statistics. This is something Paul Lucy might be able to give us a bit more insight on, because it's something that the Met sector went through because we can try by various means to get a handle on what the capability looks like in Australia. And this is very important information for the government. So, uh, you know, what is it worth to the economy? How many jobs is, are involved in the robotics industry in Australia? You know, you need to be able to answer those questions. Um, what they did in the MET sector was to actually work in with the Australian Bureau of Statistics to make sure some of that data is actually routinely collected. Paul, did you want to actually um, talk to that at all? Uh, to describe the process. Oh, Paul, sorry, you've muted. I'm not sure how you. Okay, you're unmuted. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, yes, so uh, in my time at Mexico United, one of the first things we had to do to measure um, the industry for the for the federal government was actually work with the Australian Bureau of Statistics to actually make the MET sector um, uh, an industry uh, by itself. Uh, otherwise, it's very difficult to measure uh, how it's improving the economy and how it's growing uh, in, the, in our respect. And currently, robotics doesn't have a, a set of uh, numbers or identifiers that indicate what it actually is and how it impacts on the, um, the economy in general. Um, so that would be one of the first things that we would need to do to show uh, the Australian government how important it is to the economy, uh, how it actually grows and how it improves different sectors of that. So uh, this is the difference between, say, a sector and an industry. Uh, so you may say that the, the resource sector is a sector um, and it's made up of, of a variety of industries that support different sectors as, as they go. And so robotics is one of those industries that supports multiple sectors, but it needs to be measured as an industry um, if it's going to get specific funding uh, from government sources uh, in that space. Um, so I can see Yuxi has put up another question about how is this going to help the industry players? Well, the main reason it is going to help is that, you know, all of these activities at the moment are being undertaken by volunteers who all have full-time jobs. So we can't progress without having some uh, funding to operationalise many of the aspirations that people have for the network. Uh, now, there are a number of different ways that we can explore doing that, but it would really help us get a step up if we could convince the government to give us some seed funding to be able to take these initiatives further. And then that would directly help industry players, startups, companies and end users. And uh, one of the uh, bits of feedback that we have got, um, you know, uh, during this process of, of going out to talk to different government players is that they don't support uh, providing funds to uh, operationalise um, uh, different groups. But what they are prepared to consider is uh, the way that they can fund particular projects. And so if as a community, we can identify some particular projects that we can be involved in that have collective benefit, then that could be one way that we could fund the operation of a network. Um, and uh, so anyway, I hope that answers your question, Yuxi. Shana, did you have something to add? No, just um, Nick also, uh, Lacombe, chimed in, said it also gives people within the government the tools to help support the industry. And I guess, you know, from, uh, you know, doing a lot of advocacy work um, with the RAG on front facing to, we've had quite a few government meetings, um, you know, yeah, to tell you the truth, they don't always think of us, which isn't surprising to us. 
Um, and one of the reasons it's been such a focus for us is trying to make sure we strike while the iron's hot on uh, COVID recovery, supply chain security and sovereign capability. Um, all those things are obviously really topical at the moment. So we've been kind of weighing in there um, just to make sure that we, you know, we get recognised as part of the, the COVID recovery. Yes. Um, there's another question here to, um, from Darren Foster. Um, I actually don't know what uh, Darren means, the SVP. SVP. Oh, the Silicon Valley Bank was a... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so if you want to read that question, so he's just asking a question around that they didn't get um, much time by the sound of it with the, um, the, ba the panel. Um, so he wanted oh, to... Oh, yeah, look, maybe that's something Darren and I could catch up with later because it's more to do with the Silicon Valley Bank presentation than Robotics Australia Network. Okay, if cool. that makes sense. But, um, you know, in terms of... Oh, oh hang on. Is, it might be worth you saying a couple of words of how we are going to be trying to attract more attention and more funding towards robotics. Yeah, well, I think it's, you know, maybe the way we've presented suggests that we're only talking to government people, but as, as Darren has illustrated, I was talking with Silicon Valley Bank, uh, you know, on a panel which was discussing a robotics report that they've released, and it was a, I thought it was a very useful discussion, the report actually demonstrated that one area where robotics companies should potentially be um, more highly valued is because they are the collectors of data and that is an area that is not being valued presently when venture capitalists are considering investments in robotics companies uh, and it, you know certainly you know could potentially be a huge part of many businesses moving forwards uh, because robots are such useful mobile collectors of data and that needs to be better valued when people are, are looking at, at how to um, support companies. Um, uh, should the RAG focus on government topics? Um, look, in ter the reason that advocacy is important is, I'm sure m many of you probably didn't, you know, um, worry too much about this, but last week the New South Wales government released their AI strategy. Now, you know, AI strategies you might think are a dime a dozen, but one thing that this strategy had were some concrete actions that the government had committed to do to help improve and grow the AI industry, and those were around government procurement. And opening up government procurement and uh, trying to make sure that they were considering local content when they're looking at how they uh, the provision of services and you know that directly helps <clears throat> the robotics industry. So if we can see more activity like that, then it's a useful thing. And so while you're reading uh, Mark's question there, with the other questions, the government's really around our messaging and storyboard around robotics because it has been and and the membership uh the community brought this up in in january at CSIRO just around obviously robotics has an automation had the connotation of a jobs replacement so really a lot of the work we're doing is to um you know speak to um and grab data of how robotics and automation doesn't take away jobs and it's really important we work on that because to tell you the truth we're not going to be the friend with um, anyone um, unless we start showing that sort of jobs generation that we all know is possible from from robotics so um, you know so certainly that has been a bit of a, a political football I should say a little more around robotics but I think um, certainly we're making some inroads in that space um, so you might want to pick up um, Mike's comment which I thought was a good one just a parallel to the IT industry yeah, although I, I don't know, I think Shana, given this <laughs> so much activity in the chat, <laughs> on the mirror, maybe we really just should move over onto the board so people can um, contribute directly. Okay, let's let's go um, that way because you're right. We kind of split between the chat and the mirror. So for those people who are on the chat, um, please move over to the mirror board. If you didn't see the link, it's right up the top. Um, Lucy has has shared it right up the top of the chat. Uh, for those who haven't yet accessed it. Um, please click on that and then um, I'm pretty sure everyone's used Mirror. If you haven't, please put a question in the chat um, which Lucy or someone can pick up to tell you how to use it if anyone has not used Miro before. Um, so, and Lucy will share the Miro um, up here. We'll stop um, sharing all of us and thanks Lucy and get the Miro board up. 
So the way um, the, the Robotics Australia uh, group, the board on behalf of the RAND structured the Miro board was to start with um, a few questions that we wanted people's input into. We're going to spend literally only, you know, probably four minutes or so on each question. Uh, so the first question, if you zoom in, a lot of people are starting to drop content. Uh, from your perspective, what do you see are the key challenges you are currently faced with? That's either within your company or uh, working in, in academia or, you know, if you're, if you're working in the government uh, for people who, who have joined us from there. So please drop your thoughts down. We're certainly not going to probably have the time today to um, group and take all, you know, talk to all the feedback. But what we will do is collate this into a, um, some groupings after the meeting today and then we will PDF it and send it out. So I'll just let everyone drop some thoughts down and I'll grab a couple of the key comments that I see from here that we might want to, um, to just call out. So yeah, regulatory reform is certainly um, one of the things. There's quite a lot of comments coming on um, uh, clustering, which is good. So people are clearly aware that we have um, the network as well as we have uh, our clustering Queensland and our um, newly forming Western Australia robotics cluster. I like this comment that uh, it's the perception that robotics is hard and it's a big change and a lot of costs to get started um, introduces considerable friction into the adoption and decision process of, of companies. So I think that's, that's true. Um, you know, the more that we can actually get companies starting to use robotics and recognise it's, not, uh, it's uh, not a ridiculously hard, um, then that will help. Uh, people are still finding the narrative that robotics is, you know, we need to move it away from robots takes jobs um, to, to actually the robotics industry is a, um, is a creation of new jobs for Australia. And that's certainly a lot of the advocacy and uh, communication material that we've been starting to build. Uh, people want to know what the process for membership and cost annually for individuals or companies, Sue. Um, yep. do, we, I guess I, I should haven't have... got that on the agenda today. Yeah, do you want to pick, yeah. pick that one up just I, in a moment? Yes, and I'm sorry, I should have covered that off. Um, but, you know, to start to operationalise activities, what we um, have proposed first off is uh, we're looking for some support to sponsor the roadmap to make sure we can uh, put a good product out there, but also, um, you know, that could serve to help us meet some of the needs of the Robotics Australia network. We are also looking to put out a foundation membership um, uh, uh, offer. And where that's because we don't want to commit to a, um, net, uh, a formal membership model structure until we have uh, someone in place, like a CEO, that can really go out and talk to the community and figure out what makes sense, what sort of services people most want. And part of that is actually, you know, today's activity, uh, trying to firm up what it is that people most value, but then going out and, you know, just doing some market testing of, of, of what is is reasonable and uh, you know how things might be sustainable into the future so at the moment you can join um, the Robotics Australia Network as a foundation member um, but that's just one sort of small step on the process of actually developing a membership model and the prices to be part of to be a foundation member are in no way indicative of what the final membership model might look like that is really just the um, uh, the price to be um, one of the I guess, you know, thought leaders and, uh, you know, key activists in, in trying to make the robotics industry in, in Australia, um, you know, supported by having a network and by having this, um, this group behind it. But if anyone is very keen, as I said, the first, our first, um, um, I guess, campaign is really around sponsorship of the roadmap. And we will be pushing foundation membership in a few months time. Does that make sense? Perfect. Thanks, Sue. And then the other one I like here, robotics is a team sport, but industry looks for rock star single contributors. And I think 
that definitely goes to the heart of of RAN as well as the the clusters. You know, um, I think that's exactly right. Robotics requires numerous elements, hardware and software, to com to create a, a you know a, a stack that is a, a successful solution and you know, um, particularly for, for the scale of Australia, then we're not going to have too many of those rock stars and probably nor, nor should we um, in, in hardware and software, people will tend to, um, to, to specialise. So I think that's a really good comment and, and really is what we're all trying to achieve, I think, um, with the, the RAN and the clusters. Okay, so we're going to um, keep, if you've still got challenges, keep going, drop them on there. We're going to move on to the next, um, next topic on the mirror board which we put down, um, what strategic big ticket project should the RAN focus on to unite, promote acceptance, growth, connectedness and sustainability of robotics in Australia? Um, and to tell you the truth, we get, we get asked this question quite a lot, particularly by government um, as well. You know, so being able to talk to a couple of the big ticket items and strategies that the RAN um, is working on on behalf of the industry, we would really welcome uh, your input here around things that you think would really make a, make a difference to the industry. So we're seeing, um, yep, a CRC for robotics. It's certainly something um, that's never existed for Australia. Um, it certainly is an opportunity um, that people may choose to, uh, you know, universities may choose to get together and, and take up. It's not in the RAN uh, strategy um, to, to put a CRC in place, um, but happy to take on the membership feedback if people think we need to um, consider that. Uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, so more communications. People did say here get re robotics recognised as an industry and ABS, which is what we were talking about before. Obviously, um, Publishing a roadmap and, and, you know, it really is a linchpin piece of work that's been ongoing, um, you know, through Sue and others starting several years ago to build our first roadmap. You know, I think we could work on getting even more time for the roadmap and its recommendations in this um, second, second release. And it really should set the, uh, I guess, the key work that the, the RAN uh, will focus on. Support for a real growth centre, maybe support the advanced technologies growth centre. Um, yeah, certainly um, there will be changes to next year with FIA, Almira and METS um, all starting to complete their, um, their tenure as growth centres. And there is already work at foot through those three growth centres to coalesce into a uh, at the moment, where if it gets up, if the government support it, into a not an industry-focused growth centre, but a technology-focused growth centre. Um, and the RAN um, and Queensland Robotics Cluster and WA Robotics Cluster are working with that, um, I suppose, uh, piece of work, to, and that will have a robotics and automation um, under it. So it certainly is front and centre for a, um, a technology growth centre going forward, which I think will certainly help um, help our industry. Uh, don't stop with a big document for the roadmap. Keep going to release other media forms and key actions. So I, I think that's, um, you know, definitely what, uh, as Sue said, as the RAN establishes and we put in place the RAN and, um, you know, some resourcing uh, within, you know, the Robots Australia network, the idea would be a much stronger, uh, you know, beat and pulse on communications and, and releases and engagement um, I, th I think that's exactly good feedback. Um, the Big Bang approach, you know, always, you know, needs a lot of follow-up. Uh, some comments here around a rose to be collaborative um, and working in with the RAN. Just trying to see if there's so, uh, and then support the billion dollar future robotics fund. So a lot of, um, and then someone asked, what will that be? So a lot of uh, conversation around future funds, which certainly uh, the robotics community is keen on, and that technology growth centre, to give it a name, it probably recalled something else that I was talking about. They are also um, the ones who will be looking to establish a, a technology future fund for Australia, and they seem to have a fair bit of support for that. Uh, so we're working with that, and that should also uh, start to establish some improved funding 
um, for our, our SMEs in robotics. Okay, so there's a few, and then uh, assist in forming the first robotics distributor in Australia with a range and types of robots in various commercial categories, such as telepresence, social service cleaning, others. So yeah, I, I think that's a, a good comment just around, you know, I suppose a, a single, um, single place where people can actually uh, see what the Made in Australia, let's pull it, logo is on robotics and, and what is actually available. I don't know, uh, Sue, is there any other big ticket items on the, uh, before we move off this, um, this board that you would like to call out? I just get, um, I, I never turn off the people, um, you know, flying across the screen, so I get a bit lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to point out, it's interesting that we didn't get the ubiquitous, there should be some big competition, some big challenge, which I, I actually take pretty well. I think we're getting a bit more serious about actually trying to change something. And I liked the one on um, target school age children to get into robotics and also the value of robotics. And I saw somewhere else, someone was suggesting uh, the curriculum for schools. I don't know if that was here or further up, I did see it. So um, certainly um, we haven't started the work, but that big list Sue had um, that is in, you know, was a lot of the constitution for the Robotics Australia group, the, that the board's been focused on um, will have an element around curriculum. Um, so how do we start looking at a curriculum at, for robotics at the university, the TAFE and the schools level? Um, we recognise that is something that is quite lacking. And by understanding where Australia wants to play in robotics, we can ensure we have a curriculum that is producing the roboticists for Australia that will you know, work in the you know, I suppose the robotics fields that are our best uh, source of competitive advantage. So uh, that is also a, a key key focus. I, I would call that at the to UXC's point. That would be a three year plan um, goal for the uh, the network. So, Shana, there is one thing uh, note I note on here where you know someone mentions that the um, engineering team are working on opportunities uh, in other parts of APAC, but unfortunately not Australia. And you know that correlates with some you know information that I have about you know a, a company in Australia that you know that they sell their robotics technology anywhere but Australia, unfortunately, um, and. I think that these are the sort of stories that we need to be surfacing and raising to the attention of the government because uh, while it might be hard to, you know, get, uh, you know, until we have a better way, you know, of collecting data perhaps through the ABS, you, you know, we need to have examples like this to be able to suggest policy changes that might help. Um, and, you know, I think as you mentioned, Shana, you know, it, we're not really, very much on the radar. We are overlooked. People don't often think about robotics and, you know, I guess what government policies could be introduced to help support the industry and uh, having information like that is really very useful. Well, I think the case studies is a very good idea and I think that's something that um, Robotics Australia Network could do is have those case studies on the website because the more we have, the more we can normalise robots. And there's a number of comments there that robots are seen as shiny objects and prestige, but the more that we can normalise them through uh, informing um, industry of, of where robots are being used and how they're being used, the more we can normalise them. That's, that's a good idea, that one. Okay, we'll move on. The only last comment, that, uh, and it wasn't actually a big ticket on, but I liked the single shot and consultancy. How can we create a horizontal market for robotics? And I think that kind of, you know, that probably goes to the essence of the big ticket problem. Um, ways that we can achieve that um, and suggestions from the network would be greatly appreciated because I think that's, that's exactly what we need to, um, what we need to solve. Okay, so if we go on to the 
next board. Um, so this is really um, the board looking for what are you looking for um, in terms of support or services from the RAN? Um, so as we, we start locking in the membership models, it really has to be a network that is there to support you and provide what you're looking for. Um, so if people can drop their ideas of what, you know, what they would uh, like to see onto that board, that would be, that would be awesome. Certainly a big people focus here, you know, assistance in attracting talent back to Australia. So um, I suspect anyone who's, who is, uh, obviously trying to staff up their companies um, is uh, we certainly hear feedback that that isn't that easy and we do know we do lose a lot of talent um, to, to overseas. And again, more on the funding. So people looking for uh, VCs are investing and becoming an introducer to those funds. It's very difficult to get an introduction from Australia. So, you know, kind of almost like a, a you know, a, um, funding kind of call it dating service but you know sort of helping make those introductions and um, you know providing forums that that can occur is, uh, is definitely something we'll look to do. Certification service and branding for robots build assembled and adapted in Australia so 100% made in Australia, assembled in Australia adapted or operated from Australia. And I think this whole Australian made is, um, is going to get a lot more airtime, not just in robotics, um, but I know uh, a lot of our big companies, I can only speak more so due to my background from mining, um, BHP is certainly looking to much more now. They always see the local supply and some things like that, but they're really looking to prioritise their spend um, into Australian made products uh, and, and are quite happy to pay more of a premium. And then that wasn't the case. Um, the procurement process didn't support that in the past, but the, and they won't be the only one. A lot of companies post the pandemic are looking to um, really support supply chain security um, a lot more going forward. So, so we need to make sure we use that to our benefit. I don't know. Um, Sue or Nathan, whether there's anything else that's popping out that you wanted to call out in terms of services that people are uh, dropping onto the board? Yeah, I, I see a theme of be between us, we have all the connections and all the network and all the access we want, but individually we don't. So, so the network could help us bring that together and we could access where we needed to go through the networks for other people's contacts for other people's options. I think that translates into industry access, uh, traction for product, uh, market introductions, and of course, VC funding, government grants, and just uh, the general ethos. So I think that's something very strong that um, the RAND can bring. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we've kind of used that enough. Although I did just hear that there is a robotics uh, company founder who is uh, actively looking to move back to Australia. And I think, you know, I think collecting those stories is going to be important. Okay, so we, um, in the interest of time, just going to slip down to the last board, which is really... Um, uh, I suspect most people are aware, but if you're not, obviously there are um, our clusters. Has already been one operating for a couple of years. Um, Andrew is on on the line here. Andrew Scotts, you can see, been dropping notes on. He represents and is accountable for the Queensland cluster. And Paul Lucy is working um, over in WA to stand up a, a Western Australia robotics cluster. So we have our National Robotics Australia group. Um, and then our clusters and what we want to try and understand is, I guess, your views of the different opportunities um, the clusters will fall in under, under RAN. They are one of our key mechanisms to create connection, um, but would like to hear your thoughts of what you need specifically from the RAN um, and from clusters, because we're trying to strengthen up the, uh, you know, I suppose the work of both of these, um, you yeah, know, both of these forums. And I liked the, um, the you know, advocacy at a national level at the RAN and advocacy at a regional, local level in sync you know, between the two. 
um, and that that is um, you know there's the layers as we know of advocacy, um, particularly if we do start talking the government and and no single group can cover it. So united single kind of point messaging that just you know gets repeated at at uh, different levels uh, regionally and nationally um, is certainly uh, what we're working between the RAN and the clusters in lockstep. Yeah, so when you look at the comments that are coming on, I think, you know, this is this is exactly the, the way that it is, you know, that we see it, you know, that real national strategic development and communication certification, you know, um, you know, seeking those pathways at, at, at very much that national level uh, through the RAN um, and reaching through uh, our clusters and where they don't exist, then the RAN will work with, yeah, states such as South Australia, such that those SMEs are equally... Uh, represented and can can be brought into the network uh, to meet with with other other SMEs. We hope in the future to be a, a, a large enough industry, you know, to have it, these clusters operating um, in all states. But we may be we may be a little way off that. And then lots of um, comments coming into the uh, cluster area um, around helping, um, you know companies and SMEs explore CRCP opportunities, help them with grant writing, you know, um, help them to um, matching of solution seekers with solvers, um, you know, and, and networking opportunities, particularly at that more, more local and regional uh, level to develop a sense of community. Um, and I, I would also, it's not on here, but I like to always come back to the people element you know, the whole idea of clusters is to create, um, you know, hot spots of talent, um, you know, which will certainly help secure um, Australian robotics talent and attract it back from, from overseas. So, Sue, in the interest of time, we've only got a couple of minutes to wrap. I might, um, I might hand back to yourself to, to look to bring the session to a close. All right, thanks very much, Shana. And um, sorry, did we say how long are we keeping the mirror board open for? Um, so we'll keep the mirror board open for another 24 hours, I think, Sue. Generally after that, we find people sort of forget it, <laughs> forget it exists. But certainly over the next day, if you think of something, particularly tonight, that you go, oh yeah, I've got a great idea, particularly your big ticket ideas. Um, everyone's got to put their strategic hat on for us. It really does help. Um, and then, as I said, we'll group the the, um, the mirror board material, PDF it, and send it out to um, to all the people who actually registered to attend today's session. Um, and also, Nathan is recording the session, so the materials can go out for particularly those people who may not have been able to attend. Yes. All right. Thank you, Shana. And thank you, everyone, for um, so actively participating in the mirror board activity and for the you know, inundation of questions, which are fantastic. It's good to see that so many people are interested in, uh, you know, being involved and in having a, a say in, in what we're trying to do. And I encourage you to keep that dialogue uh, going. So please contribute to the mirror board. Probably, uh, hopefully most of you will know at least one of us on the board. So feel free to reach out directly and communicate with us. Um, and we are going to be coming back to the community, you know, with an update on our plans and hopefully we will uh, be able to put forward a, a model for how Robotics Australia Network can work uh, and really just start to set up an advisory board and get the network going so that we can maintain momentum and yeah, really um, help to raise the profile of robotics in Australia. But, you know, we couldn't do this without uh, all of the amazing stories about what is happening in robotics. So thank you everyone who has been contributing uh, and keep it coming. Um, and yes, we will keep you up to date um, and um, look forward to connecting with everyone again soon in the future.
and thank you to my fellow board members, Lucy, for putting the mirror board together, Kathy, for your support as always. Kathy's our company secretary. Thank you. Um, and uh, yes, we'll see you again soon. <laughs>